the BBD 15ET rock drill from Atlas Copcow. This short video will outline the necessary steps you need to take in order to operate the rock drill to its maximum efficiency. The site should be prepared in accordance with safety regulations. The importance of protective clothing is to keep your body safe from harm. The rock drill is working under a lot of pressure and there is always potential danger from flying stones as well as incorrectly fitted hoses. A CAT scanner should be used to check for pipes and cables underground. Make long sweeping movements in both directions over the operation site. Before starting, check the rubber seals in the air hoses and replace them if necessary. Check there is oil in the oil bottle. Be sure to use the right kind. On the left is the rock drill oil and on the right is the oil for the breaker. Unscrew the cap slowly. If there's compressed air inside, it will come out before the end of the thread. Remove the cap entirely. Put the cap upside down on something clean so as not to get any dirt on the threads. Open the correct oil, in this case, the rock drill oil. Wipe the top so you get a good seal. There's a rubber O-ring on here, so you'll feel a bit of resistance at the end. Tighten the cap fully. The oil flow on this can be adjusted by using a screwdriver in the slot here. Turning anti-clockwise for increased flow and clockwise for reduced flow. This is an Atlas Copco water separator. It's known as a VAM01 or a mini VAM. It's fitted into the airline with the airflow in the direction of the arrow embossed on the surface. To fit a standard whip check, open up a loop in the whip check. Feed the hose through the loop. Release the whip check on the hose behind the clamp on the hose. Bring the end of the hose to the compressed air source and fit the whip check. But do not connect the hose at this stage. Unkink any hose to avoid anyone being hurt by whipping. Lay out the small hose that will finally connect onto the rock drill. Put the water separator on first, fitted with the arrow in line with the airflow. Secure the whip check and connect the water separator to the hose. Fit a whip check to the oil bottle. Check the rubber seal and that the arrow is in line with the airflow. Connect the whip check onto the oil bottle. Fit the coupling. connections, all whip checked. Airflow correct on the minivan. The arrow is pointing in the correct direction. Airflow on the oiler pointing in the correct direction. Check the working tool you are using is sharp and fit for purpose. The one on the left is worn and should not be used. The one on the right is okay. A worn tool will cause more vibrations through the rock drill, which will be both uncomfortable for the operator 
and put more wear and tear on the unit. The work will take longer and require more effort. Check the top of the tool. Put the tab on. Slide it down. That shows that the curve at the top is correct and not over one at the corners. And the graduations here, measured in millimeters, show the limits of wear at the edges, which is three millimeters. To check the point of the rock drill, the tip should fit squarely into the V-shape. And to check the actual tip itself, you put the slot on the tip, and that should fit over the point of the tungsten carbide bit. Here, we have two different lengths of drill rods, a long one and a short one. There are various lengths. For this demonstration, we will use the shorter drill rod to drill a 15-inch hole. First, remove the protective coverings. Measure 15 inches or whatever depth you require from the tip. Place the tape around the drill rod at this point. Whenever fitting the working tool, switch off the air supply and bleed the machine by pressing the start and stop device. Disconnect the machine from the power source. Lubricate the tool shank with grease and check it's free from grit and dirt. Close the tool retainer and check the lock function by tugging the inserted tool sharply outwards. Check the handles. Make sure they don't have any excess wear. Check the air inlet. Make sure that's tight and make sure that the rubber is good. Check the lock nut here. Make sure the muffler's tight. And make sure the kick latch retainer is locked in position. Then connect the short hose with the whip check to the rock drill. During operation, both hands should stay on the handles. The ergonomic trigger is here, so it's all part of the handle. Here are the handles in the rest position. The correct position for the handles when drilling is in a horizontal line, where the handles are straight like this. If you completely compress them, that's incorrect, and you'll get a lot more vibration. This is the correct position, letting the tool do the work, and the springs taking the vibration out of the action. Finally, the top handle is a carrying handle for the tool, and should under no circumstances be used for drilling. It has no vibration reduction purposes. It is purely a carrying handle. Always check the oil level in the compressor before use. These are the maximum and minimum levels. The choke is for starting the machine when the engine is cold. When the engine is warm, no choke is required. This is the ignition switch. Turn it from the zero to the one and from the one to start. Before fitting the hose to the compressor, check the rubber is in good condition and ensure the coupling is clean. At this stage, you could test the pressure from the compressor to the rock drill. It should be no less than six bars. When you start drilling a hole, place one foot against the drill stem 
to stop it jumping around before it bites. This is known as collaring. Switch off the compressor. Before disconnecting the rock drill from the airline, bleed air from the rock drill and air hose by depressing the trigger. Then uncouple the airline. When removing the working tool, always wear gloves, as the working tool becomes very hot. Don't put this down in the dirt, because it's covered in oil, and that will pick up a lot of grit, which could go into the rock drill next time. Keep your hands away from the start and stop device until you are ready to start the machine. Learn how the machine is switched off in the event of an emergency, and stop the machine immediately in all cases of power supply interruption. Lastly, make sure you check the side bolts on the rock drill before starting each shift.